Hello and welcome to the Shiny Bees podcast, a podcast for those that like their knitting, comedy and yarn in equally large measures. I'm your host Jo Milmine and this is episode 41, Baby Bums and Self Stripe. Hello and welcome to the show. How are you all? I hope you've all been well since the last time I spoke to you. Today is Tuesday the 7th of April. Easter has been and gone and I'm pleased to say our house is lacking in the chocolate department. I've kept a very tight lid on it this year. We didn't buy any chocolate eggs for the children. Some other people did so a little bit of chocolate snuck through. And there was no chocolate bought for each other either, uh, between myself and Mealy. We decided instead to indulge ourselves with some steak on the brier outside. The weather has been beautiful in Scotland this weekend. So I've indulged in a little bit of sitting outside in the sunshine, knitting on my socks, and generally appreciating the arrival of spring in northern Scotland. What about you guys? Did you all have a nice time? Anybody got a chocolate hangover? Yeah, that's okay. There's nobody here to judge you. Uh, So if you've been a little bit sick, a little bit sorry for yourself, you've eaten your body weight in chocolate, that's absolutely fine. Thank you to everyone who's been in touch uh, following the publication of episode 40, which was an interview with Stephen West. There was a lot of brioche in this interview, there was not a lot of calories uh, involved in said brioche and um, a lot of people have got in touch to say that actually he wasn't anything like they expected and uh, some people have even changed their opinions of him. There definitely seems to be two sides to Mr West, there's the uh, very focused introverted knitting side and then there's the side that likes to take the mickey out of himself a little bit and... um, I quite like both sides actually, I think he's an absolute sweetie and um, I'm glad that uh, the interview prompted quite a lot of you to get in touch and let me know what you think. As I said last time, if there is anyone that you would like me to go and speak to in particular, then send me a message. I'm quite happy to go and ask people for interviews and to talk about all things to do with their practice and how they get on uh, in business and what their, their daily routine's like. And I'm quite happy to ask any other random questions if you have any burning ones for people that I'm I'm going to be interviewing. I'm quite happy to ask them. I don't mind uh, doing that at all. It's quite funny. And um, I have got some interviews already backed up. Another one from Edinburgh Yarn Festival and a, uh, a few more that are, are planned to be recorded for you all. Um, because the feedback I'm getting from people is that they really enjoy those uh, the interview segments. In other news, Edinburgh Yarn Festival 2016 has been announced. I'm very excited. I did promise you a full rundown of the 2015 festivities on the podcast. However, uh, Louise at Knit British has done a very comprehensive uh, two episode long rundown of her experience. So um, I'll probably keep the majority of it to a minimum rather than repeating and going over Uh, the same things that other people have uh, mentioned but I'm pleased to say that next year 2016 the dates for the festival have changed and it will be the program will be starting on the Thursday the 17th of March and the show will be on Friday the 18th of March and Saturday the 19th of March. This pleases me no end chiefly because my birthday is the 18th of March which means I've been green lighted to uh, have a gin soiree again with all my Ravelry chums and have a jolly lovely time for my birthday. So I'm very excited. I've already sent uh, Meeline to work to book off the holidays for next year. And if the the Uber tool doesn't go that long, then he's been told to instruct the guy who does the Uber tool to make it that long, such that he can book some leave and uh, I can be assured of attendance uh, at Edinburgh again. It will be in the Corn Exchange again. I'm not sure... At this stage, it was only announced yesterday that it was definitely happening, so I'm not sure at this stage exactly what things um, Joe and Mika have got 
planned and lined up. But if I know anything about those two, um, it's that this uh, next year will be, they'll take on all the learning points uh, from before and uh, and deal with all of those and bring a load of new stuff to the party as well. So I'm quite excited about that one. It's definitely on my calendar for 2016. So thinking about today's show then, we will have for you Enablers Corner, where I will be discussing the perils of putting babies specifically naked baby bums on knitting patterns and uh, and give you a rundown of Tin Can Knit's latest collection. Brilliant. There'll be the return of the Whipping Piccadilly section, which has been absent for a little while. And just to give you a rundown of what I've been knitting on and any projects that I've got my eye on. And then we will have the return of the sock surgery where we're going to be talking about self-striping yarns. We're also going to have a giveaway uh, from the Knitting Swede, who is Tanya, and uh, it's a skin of her self-striping yarn in the colourway Robin's Evil Twin. So, what I suggest you do is get comfy, get your knitting, and depending on where you are at this point in time, a soft drink or beverage of your choice, and we will crack on with the show. So in Enablers Corner, I gave you a fair idea what this one might be about. And I'm not sure if it's Enablers Corner for a knitting collection or whether it's an Enablers Corner to expand your family. Um, Because frankly, this collection has the power to do both. I'm firmly convinced of that. Tin Can Knits, the design duo, Alexa and Emily, have... uh, collaborated again and come up with a new collection um, of six patterns basically to clothe you and your babe in some uh, swanky swanky knitwear to ensure that you're always fully prepared for any eventuality when you're out and about uh, doing your play dates and everything else it's called Max and Bodie's Wardrobe the reason for this is that um, Alexa has three children, Bodie is the smallest of, of her three children, and Emily has got baby Max, who is quite possibly the worst advert for contraception in the history of the universe. This child is criminally cute, and if he wasn't criminally cute enough when I met him at Yarndale, in this collection he's sporting a mohawk, and they've both got the little naked baby bums out. How? How are we supposed to resist? It's just its just cute. A cute explosion. It's terrible. So Max and Bodie are the muses, if you will, for this collection. And they feature heavily in the photography. They are so cute. And the faces they pull are so funny. I almost wish that Tin Canets were doing a caption competition because there's a lot of material there for that. As I said, the um, collection consists of six patterns three of which are sized up to adult size and they're on a a two weekly release schedule from now um, until June. The first pattern that's been released came out on the 2nd of April and that is Playdate which is a little cardigan so that you and your baby can go out in your matchy matchy outfits and uh, you've got a cardigan to throw over your outfit and for the baby. I mean, cardigans are always really handy when you have children um, to just throw on and off over the top of uh, little romper suits and things to keep them warm, Um, especially in in spring where you're not really sure whether it's going to be hot or cold and they don't need to be bundled up in a snowsuit, but yeah, it can still be a little bit breezy for them. So that one has already been released and to come, we still have something to keep tiny toes toasty something to keep your you and your little one snuggled up warm, something to keep baldy heads cosy, classic woolies to keep you and your darling looking smart on your play, first play date, which I assume is a play date cardigan, and something to clothe those adorable little baby butts. Honestly, it's that cocaine, those kids, so cute. I just want to bite the little bums. It's just criminal. So the Playdate cardigan is a a v-neck cardigan with pockets in the front and um, it fastens sort of halfway down 
to the bottom of the cardigan. As I said, that sized from baby all the way up to adult. And then we're left guessing at the rest of uh, the contents of the collection. I'm quite excited to see it. Not quite as much as I'm excited to see the children model in the clothes. Um, because they're just so cute. It, the little mohawk, he kills me. So, <laughs> I might cut Sammy's hair into a mohawk. Uh, just so they can be matchy-matchy. Um, but that is out now. The ebook is $14.00. And you can pre-order the print book and you get the PDF download with that for $18 plus shipping. So that is Max and Bodie's Wardrobe by Tin Can Knits. The perfect capsule collection to dress your babes and probably expand your family. <laughs> Whipping Piccadilly. It's been a while. I have been doing a little bit of knitting, um, but I've had so much other stuff to talk about. I've not really been able to shoehorn it into the podcast in any particular area. My knitting is not the fastest at the best of times, in all honesty, um, chiefly because I don't concentrate on one project at once. But a few of the projects that I've mentioned in past uh, segments of Whipping Piccadilly have now been completed and indeed have been worn out in the wild. So, in no particular order, the first one is Kunya. This is not to be confused with Kanye, Kunye, it's Kunya, not Kunye. Um, and this is a pattern that was designed for the Golden Skein by Claire Divine. It is a perfect one skein pattern. You can knit it with pretty much any yarn and it will work. And it is a crescent shaped shawl with a beaded lace border, optional beads. Of course, I optionally went for larger beads than everyone else and used Miyuki triangle beads for my edging. And I knitted the main body in five moons Diana four ply in the colorway Fools Gold. Boom, boom. Ian Brown was not harmed in the making of the shawl and uh, that is a 50% merino, 50% silk uh, blend in a sort of greeny gold, coppery gold colourway. It, um, I finished it just as I got to pod retreat, uh, can, you, can you believe I could actually still knit after what went on? And um, and I blocked it out and it was ready to go on its maiden voyage for Edinburgh Yarn Festival, which it did. I wore it on the night out on the Friday. I wore it on Saturday as well. Colour popping, rocking my Westie with my uh, sparkle and, and a pop. I did not have the texture though. Didn't have texture on really, but um, I did wear it and I really like it actually. It's... Um, it's really pretty. The drape on the shawl is lovely. And as I said, you can, and people have, knitted it in a variety of different yarns, including uh, variegated and very highly variegated yarns at that. So I can definitely see more of these in my future just because I think it's a really wearable piece. It's good fun to knit. Who doesn't love beads, frankly? And um, it's a great one skein project to really showcase um, a luxury skein of yarn. So that is Kunya by Claire Divine. It's available via Ravelry. I think it's £3.50. The next one is Quadratic by David O'Kelly. I've been knitting this forever, pretty much, considering it's a garter stitch shawl. That's pretty crazy uh, because I kept running out of yarn. It was knitted in the Golden Skein Dye for Yarn Tornado of a London colourway and the accent colours in the project were um, Desert Vista Dye Works Fruits of Summer which was some leftovers from a pair of socks that I've knitted. Again, that was a golden skin colourway dyed for us. And that is complete. And um, that was the shawl that Westy was complimenting me on in the previous interview, in the previous episode. I really like the shawl. Considering it's very simple, it's really um, versatile and really effective. I like that I could use up scraps to make it, although the main skin obviously wasn't scraps. Um, that The main skin was the Merino Camel Fingering base from Dye for Yarn, which is 55% Merino, 45% Baby Camel, and it is so soft and so lovely. It's a singles yarn, and what I like about it is... 
a lot of uh, merino based yarns when I wear them as a scarf around my neck or a shawl the back of my hair I've got very fine hair and the back of my hair just seems to knot up from the friction between the shawl and my hair does anyone else have that is it just a thing that people with fine hair get and um, but it gets into like massive knots like mats like the dogs get behind their ears that's me um but behind my head and uh that doesn't happen with this yarn and I don't know if it's because of the spin or because of the content of the fibre or because it's worn a little bit more loosely um, but it doesn't happen. The other thing that I really like about this shawl is the pointy ends of the triangle because it's kind of like an ace, um, a right angle triangle almost. The quite long and pointy ends which means unlike a lot of very triangular balanced shawls um, you're not always pulling on the ends to try and keep it around your neck. It sort of drapes around your neck and drapes down quite far and doesn't keep coming undone all the time. Um, again, which I find really handy because I'm always up and down with the children and picking things up and putting things down and carrying children and everything else. I don't want to be always fiddling with a, a shawl around my neck and I don't have to do that with this one. Um, so I really like the shape of that. And I think, again, that would be another one that I would um, not only knit uh, for myself, but I would knit for other people as well. So that is Quadratic by David O'Kelly at Eden Cottage Yachts. I've also knitted two baby hats because two of my friends have had children. The pattern I've used for this, because they've been on and off the needles in the interim. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you probably will have seen them. There was a lot of love for the baby hats. And um, this pattern was the Basic Baby Hat by Heather Tucker. It is a free pattern available via Ravelry. And it's basically sized from preemie up to sort of child adult size. One thing I would say about the sizing on it is I think the sizing does come up a little bit big. I think the newborn hat is a little bit large for a new actual newborn baby. Although by the time you got to three months it would be fine. Um for a little teeny newborn it's not it's not quite small enough. Maybe you go for the preemie size for that. If you want the baby to be able to wear it right now, like if I'm knitting for a baby right now, it's not going to wear it because it's going to be summer, it's going to be too hot. I knitted one of them in Sardar Smiley Stripes um, in the colourway, uh, oh, I want to say Hullabaloo as well. I think it is Hullabaloo. It's a rainbow striped colourway and it was just a leftover ball that I had sat in stash and I thought that would make a really cool bobble hat for a baby. Um, the little girl in question has got three older brothers. So it was it's almost going to be like a kind of anti-boy pink explosion in their house. So I thought, well, I can make her something rainbowy, and then it's a bit less pink, essentially. I'm, I'm a big fan of rainbows on kids. I'm a big fan of bright colours on kids. So that's what I went for for that. In fact, no, I'm lying. The girl, I'm lying, the boy... There's a girl and a baby, a baby girl and a baby boy. Baby boy um, is one of our friends, uh, one of my husband's long-term since uni friends, um, little boys. He got the rainbow one with an enormous rainbow pom-pom um, made out of the Sardar Smiley Stripes. And then the little girl, she got one made from Debbie Bliss Rialto. Um, that's 100% Merino, um, DK, uh, in a cherry red colourway. And then I mixed in to the, again, enormous pom-pom, um, some of the leftover rainbow yarn. So it made a little rainbow cross on it. I thought it was quite cool. So, yeah, they were both kind of like one ball projects. Uh, so you can't really go wrong, especially when it's sort of people... When I used to run a little... We had a little kind of gorilla knitting group uh, when I lived in Anglesey. And they were all members... The, the mums were all members of the Gorilla Knitting Group. None of them knit anymore, I don't think. It all got a little bit competitive when we were all in there knitting together. Um, but I don't think any of them still knit. And, um, yeah, it's a brilliant pattern. It's just a dead basic um, baby beanie pattern with a nice pretty swirl um, on the top with the decreases. You can memorise it. You can't go wrong. Um, 70 suits, is off you go. But it does come up a little bit large, as I said. So that is the basic baby hat uh, by Heather Tucker. In terms of still on the needles, ongoing projects, I recently cast on Painted, which is a pattern by Louise Sass Bangham. This is a pattern for a long, thin, triangular scarf, which utilises a vintage stitch. 
within the pattern and this um, design has been specifically created to showcase um, very highly variegated hand painted yarns. Now we all love very highly variegated hand painted yarns. You look at them in the skin you think wow they're so pretty I have to have it. Quite often these can be a little bit tricky to match up to projects. They might pool, for instance. You might not enjoy how they knit up into a knitted fabric. They might only look good in, in garter stitch and not stocking stitch or vice versa. Um, they can be tricky to work with, uh, but yet we all love them and we've all got them in our stashes. So this pattern is a, one that was designed specifically to deal with those kinds of issues. So I decided, um, in the spirit of science, to get the brightest skein that TGS has ever had and knit with that for it. So I'm using the Bartat uh, Hand Dyed Yarns Hullabaloo uh, from the quarter four celebration um, quarter. This was the yarn that Kate used for her Tarsi socks and I was umming and ahhing about using it for socks and then I saw this pattern and I'd noticed the pattern when it first came out and it basically came back out of exclusivity for a yarn club at the Loopy U and came back to Louise and she's now released it herself with another pattern for DK um, as part of a mini collection. It's £4.20 for the pattern on Ravelry, it's a paid for pattern and um, I'm quite enjoying it. You use two different sized needles to make the effect and there's enough going on in the pattern to keep you interested but it's very easily memorised so it's perfect knitting for knit night or when you're out and about. Um, not so much for on the train, I did start knitting it on the train but I kept dropping my needles because you use different size needles every other row. I kept dropping my needles down the side of the seat, it was quite annoying. Um, but provided you're not in that situation or you have better control over your needles than I do, it should be fine. Um, I'm really enjoying how it's knitting up as well. It's breaking up all of those bright colours and allowing them to pop with the larger stitches. Um, she does put notes in there for how to use an entire skein. She also puts notes in there for what to do if your yarn's starting to pool and you don't want it to pool. So you can't really go wrong if you've got you know, these beautiful skeins that you want to use but you don't really know what to do, then painted is a good pattern but she also does quite a lot of her design work is focused towards these uber pretty skeins that are highly variegated and hard to hard to match up so a great example is Knit Night which is another one of her shawls um, designed specifically for variegated yarns there are others in her collection so well worth checking out I would say um, if you have any of those in your stash and you're struggling to match them up so that is painted by Louise Zaspangen and the other thing that is on my needles and getting attention is Owls by Kate Davies. I have measured everything up so this will be a perfectly fitting Owls and I'm just on the decreases for the waist. It has taken me quite a bit longer than what I had intended for it to take. However, brilliance can't be rushed. So um, I'm taking my time with it to make sure that all of the measurements are correct and actually knitting with quite big big yarn and slightly sticky knit pro needles does tire my hands out quite a lot so um, I sort of spread out working on it to every other day. The final thing I have on the needles at the moment that is getting attention which is distinct from those that are on needles but nothing's happening with is uh, another Lapsang hat which is a another pattern by our delightful Claire Divine and this is being knit in Whitfell, Eden Cottage Yarns, Whitfell Chunky in the colourway Damson, which is a purple colourway. It's a 100% baby alpaca yarn, which comes in in 100 gram skeins, and I think it's 100 metres per 100 gram skein. Uh, I have cast this on for one of Sammy's nursery teachers who is leaving, and she's his favourite nursery teacher. She's absolutely lovely. He loves her to death and she's she, unfortunately she's leaving to go to move house such as is the way um, for a lot of people that we meet uh, in our lifestyle that people move away a lot and she's going to be moving away. It's her leaving party on Friday. I'm absolutely gutted. And um, I mean he doesn't really know yet but he when he goes in and she's not there he doesn't like it so 
going to be one of his first difficult lessons, I think, that his beloved Keely is going to be gone. And um, what can you do, really, but knit her a baby alpaca hat? Obviously, when you work in a nursery, you're outdoors a lot. Baby alpaca is very snuggly and warm. And um, I thought, she she's definitely knit worthy, so I will knit her a, a nice snuggly baby alpaca hat. Uh, for her to wear when she's outside with the kids so I'm well on with that it needs to be done by Friday it's now Tuesday I've got to the end of the brim but it is a really quick pattern I've knit it before it knits up in a few hours and it looks really impressive for something that's not taken a lot of effort or work really it's a dead simple uh, lace repeat if you've never done lace before you could easily do it uh, and it's the perfect gift knit because it's so quick so She's going to be getting one of those and that has to be done by Friday. So there's going to be a bit of knitting in the evenings in our house this week. That is a Lapsang by Claire Divine and that is part of the tea collection, which is a collection of hats based around um, the inspiration of different teas. So that's all I've got on the needles, off the needles, wherever, anywhere near the needles that I'm touching with needles at the moment. Um, let me know what you're knitting on. Is there anything that I need to know about that I should be knitting? get onto the group on Ravelry and let me know. So, in a spot of self-stripe enabling, let's move on to the sock surgery. Um, super, so I've been looking forward to this uh, sock surgery segment for a while and that is mainly because it's no secret that I have a long-standing love affair with self-striping yarns, probably due to a criminally short attention span on my part when it comes to knitting so I'm delighted to welcome back Claire to the show to talk a bit about finding and using self-striping yarns. Welcome back Claire. Hi thank you. Um, so I love self-striping yarns as well um, surprisingly enough. One of the reasons I don't knit socks with them very often though is because of this aversion that I have for the afterthought heel which we're working on. We are currently working on it. I am proud to say that I am using um, one of Laura Neal's methods from her book to add a afterthought heel into my lovely easy knit sock in an attempt to um, fall back in love with afterthought heels. So I'll be updating everyone on the blog about my progress there with some, some lovely pictures of some very enable worthy yarn. So I wanted to just talk a little bit about self-striping yarns um, in general, just quickly, though I'm not a dyer, and then just to give you a couple of hints and tips on my favourite places to get self-striping yarn in the UK, because there are lots and lots of places to get self-striping yarn overseas, for, especially from the States, but as we know, um, who wants to pay postage and customs when you can have more yarn, quite frankly, and shopping local is always better. So I thought I'd do a little bit of UK enabling. So um, I'm hoping to chat to a, a wonderful lady from The Knitting Swede who has sponsored us some yarn this month about her process of putting self-striping yarns together. But even though I've heard it before, one of the things I am always surprised at is the sort of length of time it takes to put self-stripe yarn together. It's a very labor-intensive process um, and quite sort of, not necessarily complex in terms of being very complicated, but logistically complex. Um, and I think if you think some people die in very small spaces in their kitchens or in, in reasonably small studio spaces, um, it's a little bit of a feat of logistical engineering. So the reason I say that is because self-striped yarns are often more expensive. And I think sometimes as knitters, we feel a little bit, mm, you know, of a pinch in the wallet and I definitely want to say that they are absolutely worth it and I spoke to Tanya from the Knitting Suite a little while ago and it really reminded me of why they're worth the extra money so um, do bear in mind that if you see self-stripe and they are more expensive that they are more labor intensive and definitely worth it because as Joe said they are super scrammy. So I've got four great um, yarn shops for self-stripe and if you want to see some of the the gorgeous goodies you can either pop to their shops and joe will have the links in the um, show notes or you can pop over to my blog where i'm going to have lots and lots of pictures of self-stripe yarn as if you needed any more enabling <laughs> so the first one is the knitting swede 
Um, she's a reasonably newish dyer, I think, but she dyes some really, really beautiful self stripes in some really interesting colors, usually just two colorways. So, self stripes you can have one, uh, self stripe you can have one. If you had one stripe, it would be a little random, sorry. You can have two or three or four stripes. So, the knitting suite is fantastic. She's going to be at a lot of shows this year. I know she's got a very busy year. And um, she's dyed a fantastic colorway for Kate, who's currently knitting her afterthought heels in the Robin colorway, Red Robin. We'll have to double check that. So she's a really good option. Oh, uh, no, it was Red Robin's Evil Twin, I think. Sorry, yes, it was Red Robin's Evil Twin because it was slightly darker than the normal Red Robin. Yes. Um, Tanya usually has stock on her website, which is another thing you may find with self-striping is that they don't have ready stock. So if you feel the urge to buy some self-stripe yarn right now and you can't wait, um, that's a good option. My second option is also good for um, ready, ready shop sort of yarn and, and fans of the golden skein will know the knitting goddess. Um, she's absolutely brilliant. She creates brilliant, brilliant colors and she has a wonderful self-stripe range. So definitely pop over to Knitting Goddess um, to have a look at what she's got. And she usually has quite a big range in stock. Then there's the yarn that I'm currently knitting with, which is Easy Knits, and that's John, um, who's based down in the South. I'm pretty sure he's based in London, and he dyes these really bold, vivid, vivid colors and has a um, very strong following from many knitters. Leona, I'm looking at you. Um, so, And he has these amazing, he calls them gobstoppers. I've only seen them at shows, and they're not on his website, so do keep keep an eye out but I know he's going to too many of the big shows this year so it's definitely worth having a look and those are really bright vibrant colors um, like the one I'm knitting with and then there's another one and this is I think sort of the yarn that so many people covet is the elusive trailing clouds who did the mind the gap colorway um, which you see sort of pop up every now and again um, it's my is it still called an avatar on twitter and I, I used it, yes, my avatar, and I used it on my blog for such a long time because I was so massively in love with it. So um, that's Trailing Clouds, and she does an update every week, I believe, and she does these beautiful um, multi-stripes. So she does Mind the Gap, which I think is nine tube lines or ten tube lines of the London Underground. So it's exactly like the London Underground map. So um, those are my four favorite indie dyers doing self-stripe in the UK. Um, there are some great indie dyers further afield, and, and if you are listening um, from, from overseas, two of my favorite are Desert Vista Dye Works, who does some self-stripes and has done some stuff for the Golden Skin before. Um, Twisted Limon, 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 I'm not sure how to pronounce that. I think she's in Manchester, you know. Is she? I think so. Wait. No. I think she's just, I think she's in Manchester, but everyone in the States is massively into self stripes, so or people think she's over there. I'm sure she's in Manchester. Oh, I stand, I stand corrected by my Northwestern friend here um, that Manchester's not in the States. It's not, definitely not. <laughs> oh, well, that's good news. Or maybe I've just never been able to get any from her update. I'll have to go back and, and look. I think because she's on Etsy as well, you generally assume Etsy equals US, or I do at least. Ah, and then another US bun who I always love looking at her stuff, but I've never bought any because it's so far away, is Jinx Yarns. She's based in the South. She does some great um, self-stripe colorways. I'm always massively in love with them. And then if you're not looking for a indie dyer, um, if you're looking for something a little easier on the pocket or you just want something that's commercially available, um, West Yorkshire Spinners, oh, how we love them. And I know it's technically not self-stripe, but their country birds colorways are, are very sort of self-stripe-esque um, and they're great for knitting fun afterthought socks. And uh, Regia, Regia, I never know how to say that either. I should learn, really, shouldn't I? Have a brilliant, brilliant range of um, self-striping yarns and our friends at Love Knitting have an extensive selection of their yarn. So um, there's two commercial options for you. Oh, don't forget, um, Shop and Volla. Yes, they do as well. They're not, see, I didn't include them because they tend to be more sort of gradient-y type yarns. Yeah, I guess. But I suppose, I suppose they, yes, they could. If we can have West Yorkshire Spinners Country Birds, we can definitely have them. And they do very good sock yarn. Um, it's great hard-wearing, 
lovely to knit with um, sock yarn. So And it comes really bold. Yay. Yes. <laughs> the advantage. So that's my um, roundup of that, I think. Oh, super. Can I add some more of, of my personal favourites? Because I have lots. Um, in the UK, there's Fab Funky Fibres, who are based upon the East Coast, somewhere near Harbour Yarns, I think, either North Yorkshire or Northumberland or Cleveland way. And I think with them, you can actually choose the colours that she dyes it up into Ooh. for your um, self-stripe. Again, everyone thinks she's in the States, but she's not. So she's a good one. Um, in the States, there's very colourful yarnings. Um, who's just died for the golden skin and was definitely sought out purely based on her self-striping colourways. Um, so she's in the States in, I want to say New Mexico. That might not be correct. I might have been watching too much Better Call Saul. Um, <laughs> but I think it is. I think it is New Mexico. Um, so she dyes some great colourways and she does a lot based on the um, US football teams as well. So if you're into your US football and you need some matching socks without the effort of sewing in ends, then she's probably a good person to look for. Very good. Yeah, and I'll stop the enabling right there because I could go on all day <laughs> about self-striping yarns and the, the, the varied selection in my stash. So thanks very much for all of your tips there for self-striping yarns and where to find them, Claire. We'll put a full list of those in the show notes so you're fully enabled and ready to go. And I've just looked up while you were talking and she is in Manchester. So I'm very, very sorry, Karen. I stand corrected. And uh, she's got some goodies in her shop and I could buy them right now. Mm -hmm. She does some very, very nice yarns. I, I am actually currently sitting on my hands, actually physically sitting on my hands so that I can't click and buy while I'm recording. That's probably a good thing. I, I, I think, yeah, definitely. <laughs> right. Well, thank you very much, Joe. No worries. Cheers, Claire. Bye. So as I promised, we have a giveaway this episode, which has been very kindly sponsored by Tanya at The Knitting Swede. And it's open to anyone. It's not just a sock surgery giveaway this month. Um, so anyone can enter. And it is to win a skein of um, Robin's Evil Twin which is a dark grey, dark kind of graphite grey and dark red um, self-striping colourway. So in order to be in with a chance to win, you need to go over to the group on Ravelry for the Shiny Bees podcast and in the giveaway thread that is stickied at the top of there, uh, you need to put in which of Tanya's colourways and bases is your favourite. Same drill as it always is with um, giveaways in the it's nice to do a little bit of market research for our dyers or designers who very kindly offer uh, prizes for giveaways. Just gives them a bit of feedback, lets them know what's popular and it's not a lot of work and actually um, who, doesn't look, who doesn't like looking at pictures of yarn quite frankly. So as I said, head on over there to the group on Ravelry. There is a link in the group straight to Tanya's shop, The Knitting Swede, and you can leave me a comment saying which is your favourite base and colourway. Entries will close on the 19th of April uh, at 23.59, so get your entries in before then please, and random numerator, number generator of good fortune will select the lucky winner thereafter. Thanks very much to Tanya for sponsoring our giveaway. So I'm afraid that's all we've got time for this week. Thank you very much for listening and joining me again on the show. Look forward to speaking to you again at the weekend when I will have another interview for you. So until then, take care, happy crafting and I'll speak to you all again soon. Bye. You've been listening to the Shiny Bees podcast, a podcast for those who like their knitting, comedy and yarn in equally large measures. If you'd like to get in contact with me, you can do so via the blog or I'm Shiny Bees on Ravelry, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest and Facebook. 
You can email me at shinybeesinfo at gmail.com. Music for this episode is provided by Music Alley and it is Adam and the Walter Boys and I Need a Drink. I need a drink.